Hello, welcome to the Love Fly Fear of Flying Q and A. My voice did something weird at the beginning there. Uh, my name is Paul Tizard. I just want to say hello and welcome to this weekly, mostly uh, Fear of Flying Q and A. And I just want to say a massive, massive welcome to all the new members again. We've got loads of new people joining us, and every week we've got people coming in, which is just brilliant. And that's also the same in the uh, Facebook and Love Fly uh, Instagram at Love Fly Help. We see people increasing all the time. So, so welcome to all of you. Thank you for so much for joining us. Now, the other thing I want to say is a huge, huge um, thank you to you all for how much you do in the group, thanking each other, helping each other, supporting each other, um, encouraging when people are having wobbles and stuff, you've just been amazing, amazing, amazing. So I just can't, I don't know what else I can say, but just phenomenally, amazingly perfect humans that you are helping each other out. Fantastic stuff. So just going to bring up the questions. Uh, we have got a podcast out tomorrow, which is Raj, who works in um, Virgin Holidays. He's also ex-cabin crew, so he's going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the great things that you can do when you travel and stuff and some of his favorite destinations and a couple of tips and things that are available to you to help you when you fly so that's tomorrow's podcast and uh so the questions i also want to say i've just noticed it's a lot of people coming through doing the 30-day program as well so it's lovely to see so many people are doing that because as you know we believe in that idea of there's no quick fixes you know you just got to keep doing stuff keep doing it on a daily basis and even if you have the odd blip where you lose momentum or you kind of lose focus that's all all normal so keep doing what you're doing because it's just great so mandy you said not a technical question but seeing seeing if there are times when virgin atlantic do any sales any inside info when best of book looking to do a first long haul well, well done on that yeah long haul is just like a whole different experience to flying with the shorter air you know the shorter distances it just feels bigger it just feels like there's more space i don't know i just i just love that whole feeling i don't know the, the bigness i love the bigness now they are they have sort of sell i wouldn't know when they do them but generally any time where it's going to be dead is when there's going to be a sale. So, for example, straight after Christmas, it's normally pretty dead. You know, January, February time, that's quite quiet. Apart from the half term, if you have a half term in the February, then that can be ramped up again because of the skiing season. The uh, the other time that's quite good is around sort of, sort of end of September, October time. Those two months there. Are pretty good as well so really it's outside of school summer holidays because during the, the summer holidays and the easter break and all those summer the school breaks it's when the prices seem to go up because that's when the airlines have to make the money because the rest of the time it's dead so when it's dead you can make a bit more uh sometimes get a deal if that helps you i don't know if that's inside information but that's what i found anyway um right this is Gita. Gita. Um, could you give your th top three bits of advice for people concerned about thunderstorms? I've seen this concern pop up almost every day in the chats this past month. Yeah, it's a great spot. I just checked the weather and this is what it goes like. This isn't Gita. I just checked the weather and I'm terrified because thunderstorms are predicted at my destination. Those sort of posts. I know the, I know the ones we. And so although this has been mentioned on the podcast and things like that, that's quite rightly said. Any chance that you can say something here? So I've got a take on this, which is a couple, well, a couple of things. I don't know if it's three top tips or whether it'd be a lot of ramble that we might be able to consolidate when a, a more we look back and edit it later and go, no, there's three tips there. But here are some tips. So the first thing I want to say is the most obvious thing is stop checking those bloody apps. Uh, and the reason for that is that Unless you're trained as a meteorologist, you won't really know what you're reading. Secondly, you won't, you know, this is all part of the same point. What are you going to do? 
So whether it's it says it's going to be bumpy, whether it says it doesn't, the aircraft's going to go anyway, whether you worry about it or not. So I wonder if there's actually any benefit at all. And I know you can say that's oh, easy to say, than that, but it is easy to say because it's so, so easy. It's a bit like social media feeds. You know, you can find yourself getting hooked into these things, and but you can stop. We can stop. It's just they're addictive. And I think these things are like that as well, that you get into an app or you Google something. You think, I'll oh, just have a look. I'll oh, just look this up. And then before you know it, you're hooked. So the trick is not to be not to be checking it at all. Well, what difference does it make? And I'll tell you why. What difference does it make? Because other people, this is point number two, are doing this already, who are much better qualified. So you think about, your, you know, you're trying to do someone else's job. So stop it. It's not your job. Your job is to look after yourself, your family, get yourself ready, do all the millions and one things that need to be done just to go on any trip. We're booking a holiday. We're going away in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, my God, there's so much. I haven't been on a flight, a proper long flight for about four years. I'd forgotten how much you've got to do. It's just, and I'm not a nervous flyer, as you're pleased to know, uh, but there's just so much to do. And so focus on that, you know, and then when you get into get clothing right and get some snacks and to get water when you get on board so that you're self-sufficient and think about all that sort of stuff that's your job the rest of it's not your job so you're trying to do other people's jobs and you're not qualified to do it which is insulting so stop it let them do their job you know pilots uh, uh flight planners weather off it all these people that come together for every single flight and predict what the weather's going to be like that's their job and that's what they're doing. It's not down to you to do that. So stop it. Why take on their job as well? Don't you do enough work as it is? Maybe you're going on holiday. Now you're doing the job. You're not. It's not your job. And the other thing is, this is the. Th I think this is the third point, but it could be the second. I'm not sure anymore. I've lost track. The third point is that captains, first officers, crew, they're all on the same aircraft as you. They've all got skin in the game. There are legal limits. There's regulations. There's flight planning for a reason. Every aircraft, every runway has legal limits around what it can take off in. We won't take, we won't land with a thunderstorm over an airport. We won't take off into a thunderstorm. We don't go through them. We go around them. You can see them on radars. You know, there's just, I mean, there's so, so much now on YouTube that, don't have to take my word for it. You can Google. There's pilots who literally film this stuff going around them, seeing them on their radar, stages of flight. So you just let them do that. That's, their, that's what they're qualified to do. And they're on the same flight as you. And they know that it's not dangerous. So if you've got your seatbelt on, if you've got your bottle of water or your cup of water in front of you, you can see how much it's moving, really. They're not doing anything which is illegal. They're going to do what's safe, safe always about safety and that's the route they're going to take and the other so this, this might be a fourth point no matter what you're looking at that there's no guarantee that that weather system will be there when you get there because weather moves it's it moves about that's what it doesn't doesn't just wait around for us to turn up at exactly that point it moves all the time and so and i'm not massively trained in this and i know that so whenever i've looked stuff up it's never been anything like i've seen it so i don't bother please don't bother it's not worth your time let other people worry about that that's their job your job go on holiday or go on that business trip or do whatever you're going to do and focus on that making yourself okay with it and dealing with your fear bit by bit you know so this this is just a kind of something that puts you there's something in the book we talk about it as the standby pilot it's, it's in that category you know like you're on board the whole time just on duty in case the pilot needs you, you know, in case he or she's got some questions about the flight or routing, that you're there ready, concentrating, whilst everyone else is asleep. And so I'm like in light of it, but you don't need to do that. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make the aircraft fly any safer or faster or higher or anything with you concentrating. So we need to let go of that stuff because that's not our job. So I get off my soapbox, as they say. I've been ranting now. Okay. But yeah, it's a fair question. 
But it's so, so, so easy to get yourself twisted up over this, you know. Um, here's a question that is right at the edge of what I know about stuff. So I'm go I'll give it a go because, well, because it's in here. So Rianne's asked a question. Can you tell me a bit more what happens if the landing gear fails? Is this possible? Uh, yes, it's possible. I mean, like everything with commercial aviation, there is no single point of failure. So everything has a backup. So same with engine uh, landing gear, whether it's bringing it up or let, letting it down, there's another system, there's another system. Now, of course, is it 100%? No, of course it's not. But it's not far off, like everything else. So there are specific things, I, and I'm not qualified to talk about this, so I don't want to fluff this answer. But I know when I've listened to the pilots talk about it, there's at least three different ways of getting the landing gear to come down. And there's other ways for it to come up. And if there's a problem with it, so if they take off and there's a problem, it won't go away properly. They'll just go back down and land because why take the problem to the air? And if you come into land and there's, there's, there is extra redundancy built in it. So they do practice, obviously, in the simulator because you don't want to be doing it in real aircraft. Do practice landing with gear failures all the time. This is a thing which is practiced a lot. So all pilots, yes, of course, it's not the way they want to end their flight. and But... It is something which is practiced and drilled. So if it does happen, there's there's a backup, there's a plan. And the crew, we all have different procedures that we're taught as well, which we know what to do when this type of thing were to happen. But thankfully, it's very, very rare that anything happens at all. And like all things with commercial aviation, if there is something that ever happens, it's, it's investigated so that it doesn't repeat. And that's the main message to take from this. Excuse me, Seth. I'm just going to have a swig of water. I hope that answers your question. I'm just going to have a quick look, see if there's any more, because it is a live doodah. Uh, no, can't see anything. I can see a few people watching. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice to see. It's nice to see there's real living people. Now, this is always recorded and goes into our media and files section at the top of the Facebook group. And we also, it's kept in the reels in other places as well. So if you ever want to catch up with these, you can. And if you are watching this, well, I don't know where you're watching this, but thank you if you are watching this and for putting up with me rambling on. But we are in different places. So we have got an Instagram, which is at Love Fly Help. We've got the Facebook group, which is Love Fly. And we've also got, we're on YouTube as well, which I think is also called Love Fly Help or Love Fly. But if you search for that, you should see our channel. We've got a few videos in there. We're slowly building that up. So some of these live Q&As, but also the odd podcast as well. So tomorrow's podcast, like I said, is Raj from Virgin Holidays talking about places you can go and things you can do. I've got a few others in the pipeline coming down the line, but um, just need to get organized and book them all in. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep supporting each other. Keep recommending us uh, to wherever you do. We're loving seeing the followers increasing in Instagram and the, the Facebook group growing as well. So thank you very much for that and have a great evening. Ciao.